Today in our 2014 Nissan Rogue, we're going to be showing you how to install the Firestone Coil Right Air Helper Springs for the rear axle. Part number is F4175. Now here's a good look at our air spring installed. As you can see, this is designed as a supplement to our existing coil spring. This is designed to go in place there, and once we have pressure in it, it's going to prevent that sag that we're going to get from the suspension when we have the rear of our vehicle either loaded up with stuff or if we've decided to haul a small trailer or even a cargo carrier. Now these are designed to support 500 up to about a thousand pounds of weight. So that's going to help us out a lot when it comes to leveling our vehicle. Now when we have a heavy load or a trailer on the back of the vehicle, it wants to compress our suspension. That's where our airbag is going to pick up some of that slack it's going to take a lot of the strain and excess pressure off the rear suspension system so we're not going to have to worry so much about fatigue or wear and tear. Now another common side effect that we get once we load the rear of a vehicle down, we kind of tend to take weight off the front of the vehicle or even make that front of the vehicle come up a little bit. When we do that, we're reducing the pressure that's pushing downward on our tires. That reduces our braking, our handling. It also changes the suspension geometry and can cause uneven tire wear. By having airbags properly installed, helping to re-level your vehicle, you're going to be putting that weight back down on the front, making it much safer to drive down the road. Now, the airbags aren't designed to increase your vehicle's safe load handling capability. Whatever it's designed to carry is what it's designed to carry. These act as a supplement to make sure we can get right up to that maximum of whatever it's rated for and do it safely. Another great benefit to the airbag system is even when not loaded, it's really going to do a great job of smoothing out the ride. Now the airbags are constructed of a durable polyurethane, so road elements and things like that aren't going to affect them and they'll work great for years to come. With the dual inflation valves, we are able to adjust for uneven loads too. We can inflate one airbag more or less than the other one. Here you can see in the side-by-side -side GoPro, we've painted the jump stop white. We can see that interaction between it and the silver control arm just below it. You'll see without airbags as we do the slalom, there's a lot of compression there, meaning we're getting a lot of roll side to side to our vehicle and a lot of squat. As we go over the bumps, you can see a lot of movement and a lot of bounce there in the before. However, looking at the after, we can see it's much more stable. We don't have nearly the movement or the bouncing that we had in the before. Now to begin our installation, we need to get our air spring compressed so we can slide it between the coils on the coil spring. So we'll push down on the top. The top does not have the push to connect fitting. We want to kind of flatten that down and then we're going to begin to roll it. Get that rolled up. Now you can put this in before or after just a short length of your airline tubing. Push that in until it stops. Then you want to put the little plug in. Now that'll hold it in, in a compressed state kind of like this, which will allow us to slide it into our air spring more easily. Now it's a good idea also to kind of raise up the rear of your vehicle a little bit. As you do it, it allows our coil springs to expand makes the airbag installation go a lot smoother. Now we're here on the driver's side and you can see your coil spring. It's going to be right behind that fuel tank and just in front of the rear control arm, the upper control arms here. We want the top of our bag up. It's just going to position it like that, kind of wedge it between those two coils. And we're going to continue to feed that upward through the spring. Now you can use a blunt tool. We've got a pry bar here. It's got a nice rounded edge to it. Just to kind of help guide that up into position. You certainly wouldn't want to use anything with a sharp edge though. I don't want to do any damage to the airbag. All right, once we have that most of the way in, we want to push on that outer collar and then we'll pull out that airline. And our airbag will go into its original position. If we look right up in the bottom, there'll be a hole here. And that'll lead up to a hole in the bottom of that spring perch. That's where we'll run our airline tubing through to connect to the bottom of our bag. Now we'll use a tubing cutter and we're going to make a nice flush cut on the end of our airline. It's important that that's flush so it seals properly. 
Once we have both ends cut off nice and flush, we'll split our air line in half. Now I'm gonna compress my air spring a little bit. I'll be able to bring my tubing up through, get it put into position, and we want to make sure that gets pushed firmly into position to where it seats down just like it did the first time when we did it to hold it deflated. And after that, you should be able to pull on it without it coming out. Do the same thing on our driver's side. Now, once we are sure that those valves are lined up directly with those holes in the bottom of that perch, we can lower this back down. And that'll hold our airbag in place and keep it from moving around. Now we need to route our air lines to wherever we decide to put our inflation valves. We're going to be mounting ours back kind of on the hitch. So at this first portion, we're going to have a pretty good bend so we can get up over those cross members. So I'm going to put that protective sleeve over it there. That's not only going to protect it from the bend, kind of keep it looped, but it's also going to help where this might rub up against that steel. Right up over top of the cross member there that those control arms are hooked into. Right back here. Now we need to avoid sharp edges. We need to avoid any kind of pinch points or anything else that might cause damage to our airline. And we can also zip tie it off anywhere we have a good opportunity just to prevent any movement of it. And we want little bit of slack there but not so much that it's hanging down. From there we'll bring it right over the top of our hitch. And with a few long zip ties we can run this kind of across the face of the hitch there and that'll keep us from being too close to the exhaust there. Now to mount our inflation valves we've made a just kind of a little custom bracket here. What we started with was part number 18136 universal long bracket. We bent it over 90 degrees at an inch and three eighths from this end. And on the two holes closest to the middle, we enlarge those to five sixteenths. Now what we can do, bring our valve right through the back of that. We have a flat washer on the back side, a flat washer on the front side. And then we'll thread on our nut. We'll use a 12 millimeter wrench and socket. And we get those tightened down. Now we can bring that up into position. I'm going to take the gear clamp that comes with the bracket, mount that right around our hitch, and we'll slide it into itself. Take all the slack out of there that we can. All right, once that's positioned where we want it, we're going to use a 5 16 inch socket or bit driver to secure that clamp around our hitch. As you can see, that gives us an excellent mounting location. You can trim this part of the clamp off. Now we'll bring our airline tubing down through the opening in our bracket. That'll allow us to bring it over, trim it off where we need it, and that'll be pushed right into the back of our inflation valve. And just do the same thing for our passenger side as well. All right, now let's inflate the system. Now we're going to use a little soap water solution on these connections just to make sure we don't have any leak issues. Now with no leaks detected, that's going to complete our installation of the Firestone Coil Right Air Helper Springs. Part number F4175 on our 2014 Nissan Rogue. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.